Hello Blazers, uh, city your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. Hi guys, doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, guys, we're doing yet another Russian Q&A. Once again, guys, I went to my Instagram and asked you guys to ask me any sort of personal questions you may have to me or any questions about Russia, and in this video, I'm gonna be responding to the very best ones. If you want your question to be featured in one of these videos, then make sure to follow my Instagram and be on the lookout for the next time I do this. Let's get into the first one here. I actually have a funny story to tell. Does anyone in your city know that you do YouTube? Yes, they do. Surprisingly enough, I've actually gotten recognized the most in Chilebinsk my, my whole time, I guess, maybe because I just spend most of my time here now that I'm thinking of it. But yeah, people do, and sometimes you get, like, recognized by just somebody you would never expect to get it from. Recently, I was just standing waiting to cross the streets, and a guy came up to me, like, uh, like an old guy who is old enough to be my dad, kind of kind of guy, you know, bald and bankrupt kind of age. And he was like, yo, dude, I was just watching your video, uh, like, 15 minutes ago, and I'm like, wait. Usually, like, teenagers or students recognize me, and he was like, well, I'm a teenager too, I'm 40. <laughs> so yeah, don't worry about it. Your boys got some street cred in Shilabinsk. Will you show bold and bankrupt who has the better trip? <laughs> Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Bald and Bankrupt recently on his second channel, Daily Balls, uh, on his community tab, challenged me to a drip off. Apparently Bald and Bankrupt, yeah, this post right here, he posted this. Apparently Bald and Bankrupt thinks he, he dresses better than me. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say about this billabong old navy, <laughs> super dry fit looking ass. I, I mean, dude. Uh, Bald and Bankrupt, just the absolute gall, just the sheer gall, the absolute audacity to challenge my drip. I can't wait till the time they lift uh, all the border restrictions and you come to Russia and I'll show you how to dress, okay? Because this, this has to go, dude. This is, this is, this is, the Converse sneakers can stay. Everything else has to go, dude. <laughs> By the way, guys, little self-plug. If you want to check out the drip, I have a second channel called Ramana Balin. I make a lot of fashion-related videos there. Go watch it. Our Marshrutki is still operating even if COVID can spread among the cramped seats. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember my video on Mashrutkas, which is like a uh, type of minibus uh, transportation in uh, Russia and a lot of rural cities in Russia and even uh, main cities in Russia. I made like a huge rant about them. I absolutely hate them. It's like the worst mode of public transportation just possible. Just the cheapest alternative to actual decent public transport. So you have to like use force and they usually get stuck and they get fucking like iced and you have to fucking FUCKING JESUS CHRIST! And Mashrutka is just always extremely cramped during like rush hour. There's just way more people that that, that that should allow in a minibus like that. And yeah, guys, I mean, they're still operating. I mean, nobody cares about COVID. Let's face it. What would be the alternative? Creating an actual decent public transportation system in Chilebinsk and, uh, you know, investing in actual buses to improve the uh, sort of condition of the people living here and also make them, uh, allow them to do a little bit of social distancing. Well, no, of course not. That's too much work, dude. So yeah, Mashutkas, not only are they absolute hell on wheels, right now they're also, literally every single one of those is a COVID super spreader. I love it. It's sick. I, I love it. If Putin is gone, would there be a chance of Russia joining the European Union? Uh, no, I don't think that's the case. I don't think uh, Russia could ever join the European Union. I, I feel like it would be kind of like a Turkey situation. Let's imagine for a second right now that Russia's government changes and Russia suddenly becomes super pro-Western, like pro-European, uh, whatever. All the sanctions from Russia are lifted and Russia is in, is in a complete peace with the, uh, with the West and Europe and America, which I don't think is possible. And I don't... In entirely think that should be the case, to be honest. But I don't think really Russia could ever join the European Union because it's just too big. Like, look at the European Union and look at Russia. If Russia joins the European Union, at that point it's gonna be a bigger... It's gonna be bigger by landmass than the European Union. And I don't really feel like that's something that the European Union wants and also it's gonna create a whole new issue of, like, if Russia was an EU member state, then that means that all of the borders within Russia would have to be, like, also in, like, strict control, I guess, and uh, migrants that come to Russia uh, you know that there's a lot of they could be coming into the EU as well whatever so I, th I feel like it could start a potential crisis or something again but yeah I just feel like it's not really possible I mean if you look at the Ukraine for example right now super like pro-western pro-european country right now still has not joined the European Union and I don't know if they will and even in like the next 10 years I mean I don't I honestly I'm not coming from a point like haha poo poo stupid Ukraine you guys are never gonna join the EU I'd like them to but I just I just don't think it's that easy and Russia is definitely never doing it 
All right, now let's address the question I put in the title of the video. Um, I got this question here saying, what would you say for someone who is LGBT but wants to travel to Russia? And here's the thing, uh, this is a type of question I get all the time. I get questions all the time from people saying, um, I'm gay and I'm, oh, I want to travel to Russia. Am I going to be safe? Or I'm lesbian, I want to travel to Russia. Am I going to be safe? Uh, I get uh, questions like, I'm black, I want to travel to Russia. Am I going to be safe? Or should I, you know, watch my back type stuff? So in general, I'd like to group these questions into is Russia safe to travel in general? And I would say yes, but there are a few things you need to take into account. First of all, if we're talking about race, you're, you're completely fine. You're gonna be fine. Nobody cares. Uh, and uh, unless you get super unlucky, but like, you know, there's no like skinhead gangs roaming the streets anymore. That's like a thing that died out at least like 15 years ago. So if you're afraid of facing some sort of racial discrimination as a tourist in Russia, you'll be fine. You, you're not gonna face that. But if you're gay or lesbian, there are some nuances. So first of all, if you come by yourself, you'll be fine. But if you're a very flamboyant, especially if you're a male that wears makeup, you might uh, have problems, uh, especially if you go to somewhere in rural Russia, not just Moscow or St. Petersburg Center, maybe there you'll be fine, but if you're just walking around as a guy in makeup in Russia, people might try to start shit with you, I'm just saying, so maybe you need to stay away from that. And if you want to travel to Russia as a gay couple, well, there's the classic homophobic hypocrisy here. If you're a lesbian couple, you're gonna be pretty much fine, like even if you hold hands and you go down the streets, people are just gonna think, oh, they're great friends, right? But uh, if you're two gay guys walking down the streets in Russia and you're holding hands, uh, you might have, a tr have trouble. Uh, there was actually even a video a while ago made like a social experiment in which uh, two guys like held hands hands and walk through Moscow, through the center of Moscow, and a couple of times they got attacked. So, uh, you know, essentially every sort of display of public affection uh, between the gay couple in Russia, just be very, be, just be very, very, very cautious. Uh, you might get your fate ran. But in general, if you like keep a low profile, and I know this is messed up, you know, but you know, if you really want to visit and you happen to be in the LGBTQ community, you know, be aware of those things and try to keep a low profile just for your own safety. Is Russia weed good or should I bring my own when I visit? Thanks, no fuckers. Um... <laughs> I don't know if you really keep up with like the laws in Russia, but I don't think that's the best idea, dude. Honestly. Russian drug laws are super strict, you cannot have any drugs in you or anything like that. And also, not only that, this also applies to foreigners as well. A while ago, there was actually a story that um, there was some Israeli woman who I believe was traveling from like Amsterdam uh, to uh, Israel. And for some reason, it was like through Russia or something like that. I, th I think it was from Europe to Israel. And she had weed on her and she literally got busted and was put in Russian prison for uh, smuggling drugs. Even though she wouldn't get those charges in the country she was coming from and she wouldn't get those charges in the country she was heading to Israel. So I don't really think that bringing your own weed to uh, Russia is the best idea, dude, honestly. Uh, does every family in Russia own a dacha or is it a privileged thing? It's definitely not every family. Um, it's a, it's sort of, a, it's not super privileged. A lot of families that live pretty normal, you know, not, not like super, not a luxury lifestyle, they have dachas. I know plenty of people like that. My family actually owns a dacha and we were able we were able to uh, get it and do a lot of stuff to it thanks to my YouTube channel I've been helping out my parents and stuff so that shit doesn't make you rich in Russia I feel like it maybe just shows that you you're either sort of in the uh, upper middle class kind of or you're just you know or you're in the middle class and you save up a lot of money uh, to be able to afford that shit because a lot of that is actually inherited in Russia from like back in uh, from some from like grandmas etc that's actually the case with uh, my Dutch it's been inherited from uh, my stepdad's mom so we didn't even actually buy it uh, but we but you know actually building it and doing stuff to it costs money and uh, I guess yeah you you guys uh, this channel has moved my family from you know low tier to uh, uh, upper middle class kind of thing. If you ended up having to join the army, where do you think your life would end up right now? Um, well, I would be in the army, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I'll just, I'll definitely, I would definitely come back a different person. Probably maybe I would be more mature in the sense that I would be more confrontation, less afraid of confrontation. I think that's one of my biggest uh, physical confrontation. I've been, I, I think, I feel like that's one of my big, biggest disadvantages as a male human being. I'm pretty confident or whatever. I can trash talk, but when it comes to like fighting, I'm kind of a pussy to 
be honest with you. And uh, I still have like PTSD from that time I got my ass beat. Just being honest, okay? I'm not a tough guy. But the biggest thing is that if I went to the army, it would mean that I would abandon this channel for a year, which would kill it. And I would have to work very, very, very hard to actually uh, revive it and to start making money again, to start supporting my family again. And that's just the biggest nightmare for me. So that's the last thing I want to happen. I'd be fine, life would go on, you know, but uh, this thing uh, that I've been working on for years would be in a very bad state. So I think it's really, really good that I did not end up going to the army and I can continue doing what I love and I can continue entertaining you guys. Yeah. It's nice. How are water pipelines at homes not frozen during minus 20 Celsius degrees weather in Russia? Uh, well, the thing is that usually in, um, I mean, I don't know, but usually in buildings like the one I live in, uh, you would have to turn on the, the hot water and the hot water does not start running immediately. It's cold for the first, like, minutes or so. So, like, before I have to take a shower here right now in the winter season, I turn on the hot water and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for the water to, to warm up to get hot uh, eventually. So, it starts cold and it gets slightly warmer, it's suddenly warmer, and then it's hot. Uh, it actually takes a lot. What's going on with my light today? I don't... What is this? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but maybe that has to do with it. Is that, like, the water has to run through something and heat, heat itself up? I have no idea, dude, but, you know, the Soviets knew their thing. They they built it in a way that uh, is sustainable and could uh, allow uh, hot water to run in, in, even, even in minus 20 Celsius de degrees, so yeah. Is there a reason you don't grow your beard or you just don't like the look? Essentially, I just don't like it that much. I feel like it makes my face look more round. Like, I kind of ha hate having a neck beard and I feel like when I'm shaved, uh, my jawline is popping. It's popping. So that I'm sweating my ass off today in this video. I don't I don't know why. And also, I don't know, I really hate it, like, my face is, it just gets extremely itchy and scratchy if I don't shave for, like, four or five days. I don't know, I just hate it, so that's why I, f I feel like a beard is not the way for me. And yeah, guys, I guess those are gonna be all the questions I'm gonna be responding to for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys didn't, please make sure to slap that like on it, and as well, guys, make sure to follow my Instagram once again to be on the lookout for the next one. Make sure to donate to my Patreon if you guys wanna support my channel, I really appreciate it, it helps me out a lot. Buy my YouTube as well it's a little souvenir you can get for yourself and also support my channel thank you guys once again so much for watching today's video and i will see you guys in the next one peace